shops here in town dropped this car off. Uh, they're doing a restoration on it and the customer decided he wanted to put some realistic fire on the bottom half here. So if you can see in the camera they basically sand there's a piece of chrome trim that goes all the way there. So they went right in the middle where that trim is going to be applied and they sanded this down here. And so then I cleaned the surface with the water-based cleaner and with the wax and grease remover. And so now I'm getting ready to start doing some blue realistic fire. So it should be a pretty cool video lesson. So I'm masking off the wheels here. This is probably overkill masking, but I try to overkill just to not have any overspray because I'm mostly going to be using an airbrush and a small detail gun for this job. And then where it was sanded below this chrome trim line, I put a long piece of tape there and I'm putting pieces of paper across that. And I want to show you, you need to get a masking machine like this and save so much time because the paper gets, comes out with the tape all one time. Here's one more quick look before I start painting. So I've got the top half masked off. The tape line is underneath that where that chrome trim is going to be. And the other thing to note is I did do some masking on the inside of this. I went in about a half inch in there to where when I airbrush, I can have some of the fire kind of go in there because you can sort of see into that gap. It's a little over an eighth of an inch. I think it looks more professional to have the graphics kind of go in. Customer didn't really want the flames to go all the way in and out of the jams or anything like that, but just in just a little bit is a nice detail for your customers. First step to painting this blue realistic fire is to use white base coat. I've got it fairly thin so I can airbrush pretty lightly. And the way I like to start realistic fire is basically rough in some fire shapes. And so I painted enough realistic fire to know kind of how I want it to go. Basically some of the tricks are make a lot of S shapes, a lot of reverse hooks, um, a lot of almost like snake-like shapes. But the other trick is to kind of work all over the panel. Don't try to overpaint and just finish one little spot. Um, I find that if you just work a little bit here, then you transfer up here and you go back and forth, you get a lot more even look and then it's a little bit easier to make sure you leave negative space. Negative space means you don't make it completely solid fire. You leave some of this base coat showing through. And that looks more realistic. So here at the fenders, I want this to look like this is where the fire is originating. So it's going to be coming up and blending back this way. I'm doing a little bit of an S shape with a reverse curve on it. Really one of those reverse hooks I was telling you about. And it's tough to do, but you kind of try to want to make sure you don't like have a flame stamp and do this flame and then do it exactly the same here and exactly the same here. Um, you kind of want them to all be different. If you try to study pictures of realistic fire at a campfire or something, there's no two flames that are exactly the same and they're always changing and moving. The other thing you want to try to do as you lay this out is make it look like one is going up and over and so there's just a lot of depth of layers, fire on top, fire on the bottom. Also try to keep in mind your scale. So if you watch my other videos, I've done some realistic fire on some small, small parts. And so your fire has to be a lot smaller, but if you're on a car like this, you need to make sure your flames are in proportion to this huge, long car. So you gotta make them a lot longer and bigger. Reposition the camera down a little bit further. Man, I wish I had a car lift. Maybe someday I'll go ahead and get one. This is good for my flexibility, I guess. So it's probably hard to even see these flame shapes on the video, but it's actually a little bit hard to see them as I'm painting them. So I'm doing that on purpose. I want to paint it really lightly 
That way if I want to change the shape of the flame, I can. Because when you do realistic fire, you do several layers of fire. So even if there's some of these underlying tones here, if I do a different shape and I leave that there, when I put the transparent blue on top, it'll look like fire that's deep down in. This fire ended here, this one I'm going to kind of take it up a little bit higher. Where the fire originates, you want it to be a lot wider. You think about a campfire and it's really wide at the bottom and it tapers up and gets sharp at the top. 